Hi everyone, this is Midnight Blues and Musings, and today we are back with a very special episode because we have a friend joining us. Sarah, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi everybody, my name is Sarah. Um, if you're on Twitter, my handle is at Coastal Warrior, and Cece and Neela were lucky enough today to have me on. Yeah. Today, we're going to be doing a bit more of a fun activity of analyzing skaters' natal charts, like astrology. And like just a disclaimer, this is all for fun. We're not making any assumptions. We don't really know these, pe these people personally. We're just having fun analyzing their charts because there's some really interesting patterns in skating and astrology. So yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah. So I don't know how much you guys um, know about astrology. Um, what, do you guys know like the basics or... Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. So basically your natal chart for those that don't know is pretty much like a screenshot of what the sky looked like at the time that you were born. So, you know, every moment of every day, there's different patterns in the sky uh, that the stars and the planets and the everything that's going on up there makes up. So that's what your natal chart is basically um, composing of. So when you look up, like, you know, if you go on one of those, um, free apps that will do your natal chart for you. It'll break it down. And when you get it, it's pretty much going to look like a chart with different house numbers and different zodiac signs that are assigned to that. So your house numbers correlate to different aspects of your um, life and personality. Everybody has different houses that their zodiac signs are going to correlate to. So if you're getting into astrology, that's kind of like the basics to know, like right off the bat. Um, and then I think, you know, everybody nowadays, I feel like is probably pretty much on, you know, has at least one astrology app on their phone. I don't know if you guys have any. Mila, okay, so what's, what's your sign? <laughs> I'm a Libra. That's all I know. So I have only ever downloaded CoStar and it scared the shit out of me yeah. because last summer CoStar started sending me these like really freaky messages. And CoStar that was is also weird. And that was like kind of also when I was like at my lowest in life and I kept getting these freaky, scary messages from CoStar. Uh, so I did delete the app and- yeah. um, Good choice. Now, But now I do follow that like the, the Russian tarot card le reader on YouTube, <laughs> no clue what she says, but I love when people translate it because I, 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 love, I love hearing yeah. her predictions. Um, yeah. I totally buy everything she says. Yeah. So- you're not wrong about CoStar. I actually stopped using it because the creators of CoStar have actually admitted that they like to, you know, part of my French, they like to fuck around with the people who use it and send really weird. A lot of times it makes no sense. I think yeah. um, daily just, like updates. I, yeah, I, I, I've disabled the notifications. Like I really only go on because it's really helpful for getting like, a, like just like having a chart on your phone and you can see like just like the chart really like, and I think the laid out, but that's all I use it for. I don't use it for anything else. Yeah, no, I don't recommend CoStar unless you kind of just want them to make the natal chart for you. The chart, um, yeah, that's what I I recommend do. using, I like the pattern is good. My The best astrology app, hands down, is Astrometrics. If you are interested in it, that. yeah, it's very much in depth. Um, so that's my little recommendation for today. But to jump into this, there, you know, there's 12 zodiac signs in the year. Um, the first one is Aries, and then the final one is Pisces. Each zodiac sign correlates to essentially different personality traits. And I feel like everyone, you know, has heard like, oh, you're such a Leo or you're so emotional. You must be a cancer. <laughs> like, this is just, you know, I feel like nowadays with uh, millennials and uh, especially with Gen Z, it's just so oh, yeah. Ingrained. It's so great. Well, it's actually not. I make jokes about astrology all the time. Like, no one gets it. Like I have to, explain. I appreciate your jokes. <laughs> I, I have to, well, yeah, I have like, so my friend, like one of my closest friends is a Virgo and I'm a Virgo rising. So I'm like, oh my gosh, like we totally get each other because we're both Virgos. Like, yeah. because like I have someone as a Virgo and you and she's, like total Virgo. And I have to like explain all her chart to her. And she, I don't think she's into it, but she, but, but again, she likes hearing people talk about her. Like, you know, as like anyone yeah. does. So I'm hoping people enjoy this, even skaters. Cause you know, it's just interesting and something fun to do. And you know, yeah. sk skating season is long. Uh, and then yeah. also thanks for all of the um, like submissions guys. Like you guys got really, really into it. I got like dozens of curious cat messages. So we're only doing five today. But in the future, we might do more. So don't be uh, sad if we didn't do the skater. Um, Nila, why don't you say the skaters that we're doing today? 
Okay, so today we're going to be looking at the natal charts of Kamila Valieva, Alina Zagitova, Misha Kolyada, Stefanova and Bukin, uh, and Zach Donahue. So I think this is personally going to be very, very interesting. Um, I also uh, was very like compelled by that tarot card readers like analysis <laughs> of of Maya's like rise next yeah. season. Yeah. And it terrifies me, but it's so interesting because there's a chance she's either going to be like sixth at Russian nationals or she's going to be like second and and both are very plausible yeah. so I'm very yeah very it's going to be really interesting but um before we jump in I just wanted to give a really quick rundown of what each of the different signs means just so in case anyone um isn't aware so let me pull it up so first of all your sun sign, everybody basically knows what your sun sign is. Your sun sign is the zodiac sign for the month that you were born into. And your sun sign is basically, it's your ego. It's who you are. It's how you come, you know, it's how you mostly come across to people, how you experience your life. Um, your moon on the opposite end is how you internalize everything. It's your emotions. I know for myself personally, my moon sign is what I really tend to think of myself as more. And your rising sign is the, basically the mask that you put on for the world. When people first meet you, it's the takeaway that they have of the energy that you're giving off your personality. So those are the top three, you know, areas of the natal chart. Big three. People, yeah. The big three. These are the, the big, big three. three. Yeah. That, yeah. I've read the yeah. big three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So just a quick rundown of the different, um, Zodiac signs, Aries first of the year, it's the Ram. I, per, you know, I myself, I'm an Aries sun. Um, Aries are very straightforward, dominating. We have a very short attention span. It's interesting actually, because a lot of people who actually have um, ADD or suffer from ADHD tend to have significant Aries placements in their chart, which is interesting because we're the sign that's known for, we get distracted very easily. We have a short attention span. We're very independent. Um, then we have Taurus. The Taurus is very practical. They're very loyal. They can be a little bit temperamental and they can get jealous. Um, the Geminis, Geminis, like the twin, they're known for having different aspects of their personalities. They're very, so a very social sign, very talkative. Um, and they're a little bit chaotic, I think in my personal experience. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've got a cancer. I love cancers. Cancers are very emotional. They're the nurturers of the zodiac sign. They're very in tune with their emotions. They're very sensitive. They're very, very funny and empathetic. And I think they're pretty complex people. So I love cancers. If you're out there and you've got a cancer placement, good for you. <laughs> um, Leos. Oh, Leos. Yeah. Leos are confident. They're very goal oriented. They're very warm and outgoing. They're loyal to a fault. And sometimes they can be a bit bossy and dominating. And which is why I think they kind of get a bad rap, but I'm a Leo rising. So I, I don't think it's a bad thing to have. I think it's a good sign to have. Um, then we've got the Virgos. <sighs> you know, I think if you're a skater, you probably have to have at least one prominent Virgo placement because it's just Virgos are perfectionists. Or be like Scott and have five. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. His Virgo stellium. I mean, no wonder he's a three-time Olympic champion. I mean, it was literally written in his chart, but um, Virgos are perfectionists. They are the perfectionists of the Zodiac. They are very analytical. They like things in order. I'm a Virgo moon personally, so I need everything to be very detail oriented. I like stability. Um, Virgos can get a little bit obsessive. Um, they, they're very much can get in their heads. Um, and if things get a little bit out of whack, it can kind of set them off and they got to rebalance themselves. Um, then we've got Libras. Libras are such a nice sign. I like Libras. Libras are very creative. They're witty. Um, they are known for being, uh, very intellectual. They can be a little bit indecisive though. And sometimes they can be a little bit flighty, but, um, a good sign all in all. Then we've got Scorpios, you know, and I think, I think Scorpios get such a bad rap. They're a water sign. They're very fun. Um, they're very extrovert. Or, no, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong thing. <laughs> they're very fun. They're intense. I think that's the thing that most people know about a Scorpio is that they're very, very intense and they're very, they can be very secretive and jealous. Um, very emotional, but they're passionate. They're passionate people. At the core, Scorpios are just passionate. Um, 
And then we've got Sagittarius, which is a Sagittarius is, you know, I think they're such a great sign. They are the adventures of the Zodiac. They're very fun. They're very outgoing. They do not like to be tied down. They're probably, if you have a friend who's a Sagittarius, they're probably the person that's traveling all the time, can never be tied down. They need to have a plan of like what they're going to do 24 seven. I'm sure that they've been struggling a lot in this pandemic. <laughs> Um, and following Sagittarius, we've got our very stable Capricorns. Capricorns to me are incredibly intelligent and hardworking, but they tend to be more reserved. They're very practical. They're very shy um, and organized, uh, but they, they can be a little bit defeatist sometimes, and they've got to have a little bit more confidence in themselves. And then we've got Aquarius. And for all of you Gen Zers, we are now in the age of Aquarius. So think, you know, you guys are really going to be taking over. Aquariuses are known for being innovators. They're idealistic. They're very open-minded. They're honest. They're original. And then we've got the very, very last of the zodiac signs, the Pisces. Pisces are, they're dreamers. They're very, very dreamy. They are super sensitive. They can be escapist by nature. If you've got prominent Pis Pisces placements, you are probably very intuitive, especially if you tend to have um, a Pisces placement in your Mercury, in your Mercury or your uh, Mars. You're going to be probably more intuitive, very empathic, very very sensitive. Um, but you can have a little bit of low self esteem. So that's pretty much my quick little rundown of the zodiac. So I think we can start with. Let's start with Camila. Do you guys want to start with Camila? Yeah, yeah. I have our chart pulled up. So we're gonna okay. we're gonna play a little game. We're gonna do, we're gonna guess this uh each skater's sun sign and moon sign just to see how right we are. Um, and I'm not gonna participate in the sun because I did look these charts up okay. so I know when their birthdays are, but yeah. I will participate in the moon. So, <laughs> so Mila, how about you go first for Camilla? Okay, let me think. Okay, I'm looking at the sun definition, ego and identity and life. Okay. Hmm. Camila seems like a very, like, she seems like a very logical person who, she just seems like a really lovely, lovely person. She doesn't seem impulsive. Hmm. Okay. Okay. You know what, Sarah, why don't you go first? I will think about it. So that. I'm going to say that Camila is probably, I feel like she's a, I feel like she's a Taurus or a Gemini. Okay. I feel like she's a Taurus or a Gemini. I feel like she could be a Taurus because she seems very, she seems very practical and very, and steady to me. Like she's probably a very steady, hard worker. Um, and she just gives me earth sign energy. Like earth signs are yeah. very stable. They're stable people. That's, you know, that's the basis of kind of what earth signs are. She just kind of gives me that energy. I feel like she's a Taurus or a Gemini. I don't know why. A lot of athletes are, a lot of athletes on team sports or, or sports where you have to like do a lot of work are usually earth signs. Um, I would say maybe not like someone like, uh, like a tennis player where it's more like an individual. Like I wouldn't be surprised if they were like Geminis or Leos. Yeah. Um, I, I really think that her, I hey, I think she has a water moon and I'm going to say a Pisces moon because I feel like she definitely has like that earth, like maybe like an earth side of her. Um, but I feel like she also seems very in touch with her emotions, which allows her to be so confident. So I'm saying Pisces moon. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's a good guess. I think she's got some water in her, some earth, some earth, some water. Yeah. So drum roll. What is she? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh wait, let me, let me share. I'm she excited to is see. a Camilla Valleyeva. She is a Taurus sun oh! and an Aries moon. Ooh. Interesting about the Aries. Would never expected it. Yeah, that's oh wow. Let's see. Okay, so she, so Camilla is. Keep in mind, guys, we do not have skaters' birth times, so we the charts aren't going to be completely accurate. We don't know their rising signs. But the chart that we have is showing that she is a Taurus sun, Aries moon. She's got her Mercury in Aries, her Venus in Pisces. Oh, she has her Mars in Cancer. I feel her. That, that, her actually, <laughs> that, I, I, that makes yeah. a lot of sense. <laughs> her, yeah, her Jupiter's in Scorpio, her Saturn is in Leo. Um, the generational aspects are her um, Uranus and Pisces, her Neptune and Aquarius, and she's got her Pluto and Sagittarius. So this is a very interesting chart. Do you guys have any anything that stands out to you? 
Um, definitely for me, the Mars and Cancer, you know, yeah. like people that do have their Mars and Cancer, like, you know, like they don't really want to like fight or like be super aggressive. Yeah. They're more into nurturing. And I feel like, I mean, she's obviously like 15, so she's not going to be like super yeah. aggressive, but she's not like, not like other skaters who age who definitely like leans into that aggression and is like, isn't afraid to say what she thinks. So it's definitely yeah. pr- prominent in her personality. Her? Um, I was gonna, I was gonna interject. Her and Alina were born. Um, her Aries placements are so. Oh, sorry. sorry go I was gonna go. I was gonna say before we do Alina, she and Alina are born not in the same hometown, very very close, and they're born four years apart. So I would not be surprised if we saw a lot of very similar placements between them. Mm-hmm. Interesting. You know, her Aries placements are so cool because I get the vibe. So Mercury is the Mercury is the planet that controls your thought process processes. It's how you communicate with other people and so because she's got an Aries moon and her Aries of Mercury I'm gonna guess that she is um, a very straightforward communicator she's very direct she's probably not afraid to speak her mind Um, and I think the Taurus and Aries energy makes her a very strong person like I get the sense that strong competitor she's a she's yeah she's a strong competitor she's a strong person I don't think she's afraid to speak her mind um, and her Mars in Cancer, I feel her. So um, I don't know if you guys know about that sign. I have my Mars in Cancer. <laughs> Mars in Cancer is, it's probably, it's not the best sign to have in uh, your chart just because Cancer and Mars, they don't go together that well. So basically, if you have your Mars in Cancer, you tend to be, you're very non-confrontational, you're a little passive aggressive. And a Mars in Cancer, the best way I can describe it is someone who will kind of bottle everything up until they kind of reach their breaking point and then they're going to have their moment and then they're going to cry afterwards they're going to feel bad that they went off on you (laughs) so I feel like she's you know she might be someone who kind of keeps a lot into herself and then she you know until it kind of has a little bit of a build-up so yeah and what's interesting about her chart is her chart is very balanced between fire and water which are obviously opposing signs and then she has one earth and one air sign so she has a very imbalancedly imbalancedly balanced chart yeah that's so. really interesting and yeah, she has really angels cool. five masculine and five feminine signs so very balanced on that um okay so next do you want to do we can do alina next because I, I i was i was looking at these charts they're born um not in the same like city but same like area like general area mm-hmm. which i thought was super interesting um and i think they're very similar personality wise so i was kind of unsurprised um So Sarah, how about you go first? Okay, so for Alina, I know her birthday, Um, (laughs) fun fact. So I'll wait to say that uh, about her birthday, but um, Alina to me is someone who I imagine that she probably has, um, I feel like she's got some dominant earth placements. She seems like someone to me who is uh, very practical, but she keeps her emotions in check. I don't get the vibe that um, Alina, you know, likes to get too emotional in front of other people is the vibe that I get. I think she's probably very composed and knows how to kind of keep things together. So Mm -hmm. I I imagine that she's got some dominant earth signs in her. I think she's a Virgo. Uh, She seems, she, she definitely seems like she's more on the introverted side, especially compared to her teammates. She kind of does her own thing. She seems like ridiculously hardworking, seems super practical, doesn't seem impulsive at all. And I have noticed she seems like a very modest person. So Virgo makes sense to me. Yeah, I could see that. I could see some, some prominent Virgo play, like Virgo Taurus to me, maybe she's got some cap in her. Um, Yeah, I I don't know. too. I yeah, think she's got some air in her. Maybe some like, um, maybe some like. I mean, like obviously Virgo, but maybe even like, maybe like even a couple. I I don't know what I'm going where I'm going with that, but I definitely agree with the. Ma- I would not be surprised if her moon and her sun are both Earth. I could see some big Earth energy. Yeah, B-E-E. I think so too. <laughs> big Earth energy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's see. Let's see who it is. Exciting times. Okay. She is a Taurus and a Liga with a triple Gemini stellium. I also have a triple Gemini stellium in those placements. Wow. Okay. So for you guys to know, 
from what we're looking at, Alina has her sun in Taurus. Her moon is in Leo. She has a, yeah, she has a Gemini stellium in Mercury, Venus, and Mars. She has her uh, Jupiter in Cancer, her Saturn in Gemini, and her Uranus and Neptune in Aquarius. So she is very air dominant, which yeah. is very interesting. Very Gemini dominant. She has, she has yeah. four Gemini. So just for those listening, a stellium is when you have three or more signs in the same uh, like three, three, three or more planets with the same signs. Like I have a Gemini stellium in Mercury, uh, Mars, and Jupiter. Um, so me and Lena are kind of, kind of we, we just share the, Ge- the Gemini Mercury. Um, but yeah, I was not expecting this. I was having way, way was more earth. Either. You know, the air doesn't surprise me though, because when I think of air signs, I think of people who have a better job, who are more equipped at kind of detaching themselves from their emotions and who are a little bit better at processing things and before reacting. And so that doesn't surprise me because I think Alina comes across as somebody who is very good at keeping herself composed. And um, so having a lot of air, air signs makes sense to me. What Mm -hmm. do you think, Neela? I'm, I'm, this looks like a chart that I'd predict for like Aliona. Uh (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like I, I did not expect this at all she doesn't have a single Virgo placement which is crazy to me because she genuinely seems like extremely introverted does gets the job done gets out of practice goes and hugs her dogs and grandma like that's Alina so this is really shocking to me see, see um, yeah. I'm not surprised about the Virgos because like Virgos are like very task oriented but they're also okay. very they're also very extroverted and good at making people feel comfortable like think scott he has five virgo placements he's like the most fun loving guy in skating like yeah he works hard but he also plays hard too alina a little more quiet you, you know she wouldn't be out there like chatting it up with all of her teammates and like being the class clown and the goofball um yeah i mean as a Virgo rising, I'm, I would consider myself a pretty extroverted, bubbly person, you know, like talk to people. So I'm not super surprised, but I would think maybe even like a ver- like a Mercury in Virgo, you know, like a very goal oriented thought process. But the, the Leo is interesting because uh, I'm reading the little report and it says that Moon and Leo people are not necessarily outgoing when they feel comfortable. They do like being the center of attention, which does sound like Alina. So yeah, that's interesting. This also makes me wonder if maybe, you know, in her private life, Alina is a lot more sociable than, you know, she comes across when she's working and skating. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's what I kind of love about when you, you know, when we kind of do stuff like this and like look at astrology is that you can have, you know, an opinion or a preconceived idea of what you think a skater or a person could be like. And then you can kind of, you know, obviously, you know, an astrology chart is an astrology chart, but I think it can kind of give you a good idea sometimes of like, oh, like maybe somebody is a lot different than I expected. Like not everything, com- you know, not every book, you know, looks like it does, you know, immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, as as um, Alex Russo teaches us, everything is not what it seems. <laughs> Get out of trouble in the wildest things. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, love the two. Yeah, and she has a very air dominant chart. I also have a very air dominant chart, so I relate. <laughs> I, I think we have almost. I think I have maybe one more Earth sign, but other than that, we have almost the same chart in terms of our elemental distributions. Yeah, she's got a lot. It's, yeah, it's so interesting. She's very air dominant, and she's very um, masculine sign dominant too. Mm-hmm. That's very cool. Okay, um, who? What skater do you guys want to do next? How about Misha? Misha? Okay. Yeah. What do you guys think for Misha? Neela, you first. Nice. I was muted. Um, <laughs> he loves his wife a lot. So I'm like scrolling through this list. Um, like, uh, hmm. Maybe cancery. Very mo- like nurturing. Yeah. Nurturing like a, a water sign, maybe like a Scorpio. He is yeah. very secretive too, because like yeah. any time Anytime a journalist ask, asks him like a, a semi, n- semi-personal question about like his training, he's like, why do I need to tell you that? It's a secret, go ask my coach. Like he doesn't <laughs> say it in a like, snarky tone or anything, but that's just like how he answers every question. And he's just like, he always has to bring up his wife. And I think it's adorable. So yeah, I'd agree with you. Yeah, yeah so maybe he's got some Scorpio in him. Yeah, I feel, he fe- I feel like he's very water and air sign dominant. 
Mm -hmm. would be shocked if we found a lot of fire in his chart. Same. I agree. I think to me, he's, I I think he's in, I think his sun sign's an air sign. I want to say, you know, I think Aquarius, I'm going to guess Aquarius and he's in Aquarius. Okay. I don't know. We'll see. I think, I think his moon sign is probably, it's probably like an earth or air. Maybe I'm going to say Libra because I'm just going to decide. Okay. Yeah. Misha. Da, 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 da. Exciting. He is a Aquarius oh! and a Libra. Oh my God, we guessed it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Let's look at this. Okay. So guys, Misha's chart, he is a sun in Aquarius. His moon's in Libra. His Mercury is also in Aquarius. He's got his Venus in Capricorn, his Mars in Leo, Ooh, his uh, Jupiter's in Sagittarius, his Saturn's in Pisces, his Uranus is in Capricorn, and his Neptune's also in Capricorn. So yeah, we were right. So he's got a lot of, he's got a good balance. Earth and definitely air are his major Mm -hmm. placements, I think. I am shocked by this Capricorn and Venus because Capricorns, I mean, it, like infamous Jake Gyllenhaal and Taylor Swift are both Capricorns. <laughs> he, you know, brought, sorry, I listened to Red today. So I'm like, like all too well is like running through my mind, but they had been dating for like two weeks and he brought her to see his family at Thanksgiving. And then he didn't come to her 21st birthday party weeks later. Like that is the Capricorns are always, you know, like on to the next thing, on the next thing. Like if you can get a Capricorn for like love, like that is like insane. Like kudos yeah. to you. So I am, shocked that he's such a wife guy and he's like his Capricorn in Venus his wife is probably one special special woman yeah because Capricorns are so they are incredibly stubborn like it is so hard once a Capricorn has like made up their mind on something they are going to stick to it so um the Capricorn Venus is interesting I think yeah I agree I think like you said his wife is a special lady but I'm interested in his Mars and Leo because I would not want to piss him off I feel like he, if he were he, to be he pushed seems scary. <laughs> if he were I feel like if he were to be pushed like you know with a Mars and Leo like he wouldn't be afraid to like have it out with you let's see yeah his moon and Libra. his moon and Libra makes sense you know so happy. double the air signs I, I okay I I looked this up and I promise I was totally guessing like I didn't even remember. I was just guessing. So I'm actually so proud of myself for that. Yeah, no. I agree. Neela, is there anything else in his chart that you think stands Um, out to you? So, so I will absolutely not say anything insightful when it comes to natal charts and astrology. I am simply parroting what you two are saying. (laughs) I am not even joking. I am using this website to like to calculate my own birth chart. And I'm, I was like, when I was on mute, that's what I was looking at. So now I'm like trying to understand what everything means. So that's how useless I am when it comes to astrology. Oh, yeah, no, that's okay. we can, That's fine. We could talk about it after yeah. after we record. Okay. I, we can go through it if you wanted to. Yeah. It'd be so fun. We, we, we love talking about our uh, birth charts with each yeah, other. I, I, yeah, no, we do that a lot. But yeah, no, Misha's got a really cool chart. He's very air dominant, which makes sense to me um, because he, you know, like I said, air, you know, air air signs tend to be people who are very good at kind of being a little bit more practical, not reacting emotionally at first. They tend to be more, you know, a little bit more, we're going to stop and think about this before we just say something. So it doesn't surprise me that Misha is so air dominant because I definitely think that's kind of how he comes across. He comes across pretty well put together. Thinks before yeah. he speaks. He's not too emotional. Yeah. He's also kind of seems very detached and skating. Like, you know, he skates, he's involved in skating, but he's not like, it's not his life you know he's kind of, kind of detached which is like you know maybe it's a good like definitely a good thing for skating sometimes yeah. um how about we go over tessa and scott's charts very very quickly there have been oh, like God, there have been a, there have been dozens of readings on them so we're just going to quickly go over them uh we're yeah. not going to we're not going to guess them or anything because their charts yeah, are so funny um so we're just going <laughs> to go over them really quick because a lot of people requested it and like there yeah. are people that have done way more in-depth readings I want to give a do. shout out I want to give a shout out to Luna Lilith on yes. Tumblr she is a fantastic she's in a, uh, she's really into astrology and in her spare time she like hand draws the natal charts for 
so many different skaters. She's done a really interesting workup on Tessa and Scott's natal charts for people who are fans of them. And she has been, you know, I was literally looking at her Tumblr right before we went on. She does it for lots of different skaters. So if anybody who's into skating wants to kind of know, I bet you Luna's already done it. So you should go yeah. and check out her Tumblr. We, we sure. are just mere alkalites compared to her. Yes. <laughs> no, like so she's like is, much more in tune. This is Tessa's chart. And Tessa's chart is uh, she's a Taurus sun, Libra moon. She has a Gemini stellium in her Mercury, Venus, and Jupiter. And then a Cancer in Mars, just like Sarah and, mm-hmm. and Camilla. And then she has a Capricorn stellium in Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So, yeah. so she's got a ton of, she's very earth dominant and no fire, dominant. no fire, no, no fire in her. She's just, yeah, <laughs> she doesn't, there's not a lot of water in here either, but that Mars, you know, it's like, it's interesting. Cause I have two major, um, water placements. I've got my Pisces, my Mercury and Pisces and my Mars and Cancer. So when I see her Mars and Cancer too, I'm just like, oh girl, I feel you. Like I, I, I get where you're probably going. I only have, I only have one wall. I only have one water on my whole chart and, it, and it's my sun sign. Well, you Which, know what? That's an important sign. That, so. that is true. That is true. But it, it makes a lot of sense. But yeah, Tessa's chart, <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. she's, she's very air. She's very air dominant. She's an earth and air girl. She's going to be very practical. She's not going to be someone who likes to let people see her emotions is what I would take away from that chart, except for when you push her to the point with that Mars and Cancer. Yeah. And then we have Scott's chart. Oh Scott's chart God. is actually the funniest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I mean, Scott Moore I... has four Virgos, <sighs> his sun, his Mercury, his Venus, and his Mars. And then he has a Sag moon and then a Sag Saturn and Uranus with the Capricorn Neptune. Um, he has no air and all earth and fire, which makes so much sense if you look at his personality and just the way he skates and the way he like is like Alma He's a perfectionist. Alma planned this out when she gave birth to Scott. She was like, <laughs> I'm going to raise the most the chart that would most lead to an, uh, to a three time Olympic champion. There's <laughs> you know he. Virgos are Virgos and he is the epitome of a Virgo. I mean, he's the, he's like, I don't know if you li- guys listen to our CPOM interview, but you know, Scott is like, has everything planned out and for every 15 yeah. minutes. And if they finish their task, he has more tasks for them to do and outlines the ta- the big overarching task. Like, I know that's a, like a Gadois thing, but like Scott definitely takes it to the next level. He oh, no, yeah. like, totally he's thrived an attention un- under that environment during the comeback like he loves it he loves planning I'm sure yeah so (laughs) I mean if you're going to be a three-time Olympic champion you're yeah having a Virgo stellium like that in your chart is going to do it (laughs) it makes sense but yeah um I think the next person we're going to do is Stefanova and Bukin yeah so I'm very excited to people wanted us to talk about their partnership and how they work with their two signs so um, how about you guys guess, uh, well, we can, we can do Sasha first. So you guys sure. can guess Sasha's sign. I think she's a Leo. She gives me the biggest Leo energy. She just seems like someone who is very confident, dominates the room, is probably very social. Um, but I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't want to rub her the wrong way. And I feel like she... I feel like she probably has some par- prominent earth placements to, to balance out that major fire placement sign that she has with her sun sign. Mm-hmm. I totally agree about the Leo thing. Leo or Gemini, because Leo and Gemini's are very similar. Mm-hmm. Interesting and very interesting fact I learned is like a lot of actors are Gemini's or Leo's, which makes total yes. sense. Yes. Because like, it's so you, performative. Like it's like like one, like it's performative. You have to be able to have like these different sides of you. You have to enjoy being in the center of tension, enjoy talking about yourself, enjoy like promoting things, being around people, you know, being relied upon. Um, so it makes sense that a lot of like entertainers are Gemini's or Leo's. But I think she has an air rising. And I'm gonna also say Libra again because I don't know. I just I just get a vibe. Yeah. What do you think, Neela? Um, so, uh, based on my, based on my PhD in natal charts, um, <laughs> I'm a cafe astrology, um, I am going to make the bold claim that I think her sun sign is a Scorpio. Uh, Ooh. and I actually think that, uh, 
Buchan is is the Leo. Um, his sun sign is a Leo because he seems so like I I was like looking at his TikTok last night. He just seems <laughs> so fun and like. I don't know enough about Sasha's personality. I only know what I've seen on like Instagram and like her interviews and stuff. So I think, I think she is a Scorpio. We'll see. Cool. Okay. Da, 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 da. Sasha is a Leo ah, sun and, Ge- and Gemini moon. I think in, in a different world where Sasha didn't skate, she would have made the perfect actress. Oh, for sure. She would have oh my God. loved it. Oh, and also that Mercury and Virgo, a lot of like, also a lot of people that are entertainment are also like, like have like major Virgo placements because you know, they can live at, have their projects and like work on them. Um, very interesting chart here. So um, interesting note, Sasha and Misha are both born in the same year in this, in both born in St. Petersburg. So they're going to have very similar charts. Obviously they're born six months apart, but um, a lot of their like, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptunes are the same, I believe. Yes, those are usually generational signs. So if you're born within like the same kind of two year, I think two year or three year window, yeah, you're going to have the same signs there. But I am very proud of us because yes, she is a Leo sun. You are right, Cece. She has an air sign moon. She's got uh, her sun in Leo. Her moon is in Gemini. Her Mercury is in Virgo. Her Venus is in Leo. Her Mars is in Libra. Her Jupiter is in Sagittarius, her Saturn in Pisces, and her Uranus and Neptune are in Capricorn. So she is like very, I think she's pretty well balanced. She's got a lot going on there. She's very balanced. She's got three signs in fire and earth, two in air and water, and she's very balanced between the feminine, masculine and feminine signs as well. So she's got, you know, she may be, may have maybe two of the more temperamental signs for her Mm -hmm. sun and moon, but the rest of her planets are very well balanced. She definitely has a good head on her shoulders. She knows what she needs to do and she's able to get there. Yeah. And I feel like with her Mercury and Virgo, she's probably one of those people that when you talk to her, like she's, she's very uh, detail oriented. So she's yeah, probably like, da, 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 really, I feel like if you're talking to Sasha, she's probably a very good listener. She's really engaged with what you're saying. She's going to pick up on the finer details that other people might gla- like gloss over. I feel like she's going to be that person that like really gets it. So. Yeah, and I think it's interesting. So um, we haven't really talked about this, but like your Lilith sign is kind of like your dark side of your personality and her Lilith and her moon are both in Gemini. So I feel like maybe if Sasha gets in kind of like a bad space, her like trying to get caught up in her own emotions internally and that kind of is like self-destructive. Um, so very interesting. Yeah, that Gemini moon, she's probably, there's internally, she probably my think of herself maybe is like having different aspects of her personality that she kind of is juggling like when she's thinking about who she is like in her mind so that's that's interesting but yeah this is a this is a good chart there's a lot she's a very complex person I feel looking at this I don't think she's just like one note or anything I think there's a lot going on there yeah okay and we have Ivan guesses I think he is I feel like he's got Libra in him. I don't know why. Like, I feel like Ivan comes across as someone who is just happy-go-lucky, good personality. Like, he's not here to cause drama. He's just kind of here, like, here to have a good time, if not a long time. And I don't know why. I feel like he's got a major Libra placement or or some Virgo in him, I would say. I don't know why. I just think he's got earth and, like, earth and air. I have one more thing. I am so surprised Sasha doesn't have cancer placements because of that story where she, like, nursed Ivan back to health when they were kids yeah. like that is something I would do when I was little with my like stuffed animals and stuff and like I'm really involved into like you know like recruitment and like like working with people and like mentorship like LinkedIn, well, you boss, know. LinkedIn boss babe um anyways <laughs> but like um like I'm surprised she has no cancer in her chart with that like she obviously is very protective of him I think that's the Leo the Venus and Le- like that's her Leo placements because Leo's the you know the zodiac sign for Leo is the lion they're very protective and they can be very loyal um, loyal and nurturing yeah. so I feel like that's probably her Leo that's true. okay sorry back to Ivan I was just thinking about that <laughs> no that's what makes sense yeah no this is um, um we gotta I go think- to his chart oh, oh okay. no sorry what do we do um, I think I okay so I think I was thinking about this I think Ivan might have cancer placements I feel maybe a Cancer moon or a Venus in Cancer. I can see him, you know, 
being very protective of Sasha, you know, and he's like, he's not like the leader of the team. I think Sasha's the leader, Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, he still like is like, wants to be a part of things. And you know, he's like a happy, like, like happy go lucky guy, you know, like I don't think he's disliked or people are like, oh, like controversial. Yeah, I, would you guys agree? I feel like I'll be surprised if he has a lot of fire in his chart. I think he's gonna be more like earth and air dominant. I agree. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. Got. It's like it's like opening a ballot. Uh, Ivan Buchan. He is a oh. Ooh. Oh. So Ivan is has a Virgo in his sun and his moon. A Libra in Mercury, a Venus in Leo. So he and Sasha both have their Venuses in Leo. So they probably get along mm-hmm. really, really well that well. His Libra and Jupiter are both in Mars. His Saturn is in Aquarius and his Uranus and Neptune are both in Capricorn. So he has one fire sign, four air signs, four earth signs, and one water sign. So, you know, we were, I think we were right. Yeah, I think this is like what, yeah, this is what I expected. He's got a lot of... He's got a Libra stellium, which doesn't surprise me because he just gives me, he just gives like radiates Libra energy to me. I feel like I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Like, it's just, when I think of a Libra, I think of (laughs) Um, his Virgo sun and Virgo moon are so interesting though. He, I think he is an incredibly hard worker. Um, He's like, you know, I, in my opinion, when I look at someone's chart and I see um, like Virgo or Capricorn signs, if I see a Virgo, Capricorn, or Taurus in your major signs, like your sun, your moon, your rising, or your Mercury, I feel like these people tend to be incredibly hardworking, very, very intelligent, and usually have a lot of drive and ambition. So that's like what I'm getting from his Virgo placements. Yeah. he. Um, I mean, like, I'm not just saying this because they're both Virgos, but he and Scott are very, very similar, I feel. Um, and like, obviously their sons are both um, Virgos, but they have, um, Scott has that Mercury in Virgo and Ivan has the moon, you know, very fun loving people, but also very goal oriented at the same time. And, you know, they work hard, play hard. Yeah, I agree. And yeah, the, le- the, him and Sasha both having their Venus and Leo is interesting. Yeah, I agree. I think that they probably connect a lot there. Um, mm-hmm. Leos tend to gravitate towards other Leos and fire signs. So that, you know, that makes sense to me why they get along so well. How, uh, how, do, you guys, how do you guys think their partnership works as like a Virgo and a Leo, which I think Virgo and Leo might be the inverse signs of each other, if I'm not mistaken. I actually don't know. So I'm going to, I'm going to trust you on that. Let me look it up. <laughs> Um, let's see, you know, I just, yeah, I get the vibe that Sasha is the leader of the team, but I feel like Ivan is like very, like they work very well together. They're like, it's very much a partnership. I don't think it's just her running the show, Mm -hmm. but I think that they work really well in tandem together is kind of Mm -hmm. the vibe that I'm getting from their charts. What do you think, Mila? I think that Ivan is, is like a teddy bear. Um, and is very hardworking, super goal oriented in the exact same way Scott is very like naturally talented. Like he has a lot of raw talent, but he, he definitely seems like he will do whatever Sasha tells him to do. And I think it's adorable. And I think that's just how their friendship and partnership has, has worked. Um, like the, the, I don't know, because if, since they were little, Sasha has always kind of been like babying him and taking care of him and stuff. And now she's kind of like the boss in the rink. And yeah, I mean, I think it makes sense why they work so well, uh, kind of in a similar way to, to Tessa and Scott, but I don't, I don't think that Tessa is the leader of that, of that duo. Um, Off ice, maybe I- not on ice, not, not on ice. Not on ice, maybe off ice, definitely. Yeah, off on ice, ice, absolutely not. Uh, on ice, it's Scott. Scott, he runs that show. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. is yelling at Piper and Paul to get out of the way. He is, we need you to do 20 more run throughs of that lift. And Tessa's like, okay, Scott. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. That man would not tolerate not being the leader in any aspect of that partnership with four yeah. Virgos. Like, he would, he would not tolerate that. He would actually mm-hmm. go insane. Yeah, I always think back to, um, to anyone who did not watch the fabulous documentary series the Tessa and Scott show um, we're gonna like, uh, we're, we're gonna discuss that on the podcast 
Oh yeah, I was like, are you guys gonna watch it? We're gonna, I'm gonna force Nila to watch it and then we will discuss it. (laughs) I think you should. I think you should. I don't know what, I don't know what kind of VM fan someone is if they haven't watched that masterpiece. It's so fun. (laughs) It's also not that bad. Like, it's actually very interesting to look to see how, like, skaters they do their I, life I like I see it I think it's the worst skating documentary that I've like ever seen clips of <laughs> and I've watched like many documentaries of like athletes and skaters and it's the it's definitely the worst one it was a documentary um, it was a reality show yeah it was, it was a reality, reality show, show. Yeah, <laughs> it was a reality yeah. show but I, I only like see those clips on Twitter or like on Tumblr and stuff. And I get so much secondhand embarrassment. Anytime like Fedora and like Scott oh. are the same. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it. Yeah, no, there's um, there's a line in the show where Tessa basically says that like Scott sets the tone for how the practice is going to go. And I think looking at his chart, like that's all you need to know is that like Scott sets the tone. Like he sets how things are going to go. Like that's just how someone who's so Virgo dominated is going to be. Like they can't help themselves. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. But, oh, I think. Do it. No, I was going to say, who's next? Oh, Zachary. Zach. Zachary, Zach. Zachary, yeah. Oh. Okay, so here's Zachary. Oh, Zach. And this was. Honestly, the most interesting request we got. So I was like, guys, we have to do it. Like, I would have never thought of this. It's going to be an interesting chart to read. Uh, so what are you guys' thoughts? Um, <laughs> so, okay, so I, 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 believe the, I believe the request was the curious cat saying, Zachary Donahue, please, that man is a mystery. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I really feel like Zach comes across to me as someone who I think he's got a major earth placement but I really feel like he's got some prominent water placements in him like he just seems very emotional to me he doesn't seem like he I don't think he has a good poker face like I think he's someone who's very expressive with how he's feeling and in the moment especially uh, yeah. when we watch him in the kiss and cry like he uh yeah I, I would he can't help but show who he is like he's very much it's just like what you, you know, what you see is what you're going to get with him. I would argue Pisces. I think he's not, I, nurtur- yeah. he's oh, not, yes. he's not nurturing enough to be a Cancer and he's not intense enough to be a Scorpio. Like, like the most famous example of Scorpios is triple Scorpio extraordinaire, Xenia. Uh, <laughs> so she's like your pure Scorpio, like in, super intense. She's like, we're going to get down to it. Like, da, 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 da. Does have a very good poker face. Um, so I think he has a Pisces. I, what? <laughs> what sign is someone that can't help but open their mouth and like run their mouth like that's well <laughs> I mean because I would say that's the sign he has he might have some Aries Aries are very straight shooters um you know if he he's probably got some fire signs and he like maybe he's got some fire in him um but yeah like I feel like maybe maybe he's either like a Pisces rising or his moon is in Pisces I don't know I feel like he's I think he's an earth uh, an earth sun. Is he a Capricorn? I think he's probably a Capricorn. No, but he's not emotionally closed off at all, nor is he shy or reserved. Well, you know, there's like layers. Okay. <laughs> there are, you know, the, the interesting thing about, you know, your natal chart is that all of the different components really make up your full personality. You are more than just one sign. You are all of these different parts of your chart put together and people are complex you know not everybody's going to be you know live up to the you know stereotype of a leo a capricorn you know we're all complex we things you know we're going to feel how we feel so but i I agree he's definitely a lot closed off i'm thinking of the news when madison got engaged to adria oh my god (laughs) okay back okay so we've got zachary donahue he's from connecticut which i didn't know um you know, I have to look up the birthplace. So he's from Connecticut. He is a Capricorn sun. Interesting. Libra moon, Sag hmm. Mercury, Aquarius Venus, Taurus and Mars. That does make sense. Yeah. Leo and Jupiter and a Capricorn stellium in his Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So he- Wow. So he's very cap. Very cap. He- when will Olivia write her all too well? 
<laughs> not soon enough. Olivia, if you're listening to this, please get on it. We want to hear what you have to say. We want to see how he kept your scarf at his sister's place because it reminded you of innocence <laughs> and he smelled like me. Anyways. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. So this is interesting. He's got, okay. So he's very earth dominant because of all of his, his Capricorn stuff. There's no water. <laughs> no I am water. shocked. I am so shocked. I really thought he was going to have like a dominant Pisces placement. I mean, I guess he could be a Pisces rising and we don't know, but yeah. I just, <laughs> Zachary Donahue, if you know what time you were born, <laughs> please DM us. Send we, us a quick message. We would love to know, or if anyone has access to the Hartford um, local hospital birth records, <laughs> or was there. <laughs> I'm kidding, please don't do that. We're not crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, his, what is his Mars and Taurus? Yeah, his Mars and Taurus, I mean, very stubborn. I feel like he's probably, when he gets, uh, if you upset him and you're kind of in a confrontation with him, like he is going to be stubborn to the point he's not going to relent. Um, and is his mo- what's his moon in again? Is it Libra? It's Libra. Libra. Yeah, yeah. That I think that makes sense. I, you know, I feel like sometimes. So my Mercury is in. I'm oh no, sorry, not my Mercury. One of my prominent signs is in is a Libra. My Jupiter is a Libra, and it's funny because one time I read at like a description of that was like oh if you have this placement like you're probably gonna be a little procrastinator you're probably gonna like be a little like flighty and like head in the clouds you kind of like need your other placements to kind of balance that out so it's funny that he's a Libra moon because he kind of gives me the vibe of like being a little flighty being a little scatterbrained sometimes (laughs) yeah I mean like I mean just look at his skating his you know he seems like he concentrates very hard on one aspect of his skating and then he you know, forgets to do the twizzle sequence or he falls because he's too focused um, at like one part and forgets everything else um, or he's like not paying attention and he doesn't support Maddie correctly. Um, I feel like he's looking at his skating. That's like kind of very obvious in his skating. I do think he's a hard worker though. I think at least from this chart, like, yeah. Capric- like he's got so much Capricorn energy. I would I not be surprised. Yeah. Really hard. I would not be surprised if Maddie had a very similar chart in terms of her element distributions because they are the team in which they seem the most similar. I can't say that about a lot of ice dance teams, but they seem like the same person, um, which is like very interesting because usually, you know, opposites attract. Yeah. I feel like, she, you know, maybe she has the Pisces energy. Maybe that's let's, where I'm getting it Let's from look at this up. team. Let's look, let's look, which I feel like she, I really thought Zach had some Pisces placements. This is so interesting. She is a Pisces. Ooh, okay. So maybe, oh gosh. maybe that's where, maybe that's why I thought this. She is the same. Yeah. I think Olivia Rodrigo is a great example of a, of a Pisces. Yeah. She's a good, good Pisces example. All right. So we went through all of our skaters. Hopefully you all learned something or enjoyed listening to us give our commentary on, you know, astrology and the skaters. Um, If you guys have any feedback or skaters you want us to do next, please um, drop a little note in our Curious Cat or you can DM us or add us directly. You know, don't be shy. Um, Thank you so much for Sarah for taking time out of your day to speak with us. Thank you guys for having me on. It was a pleasure. Yeah. All right. Well, um, we are so excited for this for you guys to episode, and uh, we hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye. Bye.